Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. If you enjoy this video, please ask Mixer to pay all their streamers to just stream footage of pelicans from the National Geographic station 24 hours a day, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. So I always get asked what my favourite game of all time is and it's easily this. It's 15 years old and I still have so much fun with it. Geez, that sentence could be taken out of context, but anyway. We pick up where we left off in San Fierro as we were forced to leave Los Santos because our fellow gang members betrayed us. Our brother is being held hostage in a prison by some corrupt cops, and yes, I'm aware we've gained some baby weight. I don't mean the weight a maternal mother gains during her pregnancy, we've just eaten too many babies. I'm not sure what comes over me, but I decide to climb on top of this tram, but fail to press the jump button and instead are dragged underneath until I am eventually crushed. What a horrific way to die and an awful way to start the video. I respawn at the hospital and am charged $100 for medical bills, rest in peace Obamacare. While I'm here, I may as well put in a shift as an ambulance driver, as I've heard it pays well, at the expense of developing some pretty serious PTSD. I head over to pick up my first patient, which is exciting, and oh my god, that's a lot of blood. Jesus Christ, how are you even still walking, let alone alive? I love how CJ doesn't even get out to help. Being a lazy Ambo driver is good honest work though, as I just cruise around doing my thing until this prostitute has the audacity to get in the front seat of my van. What are you doing big girl? You're going to bleed all over my Versace leather seats and probably give me hepatitis. In what world do you think it's appropriate to ride up front with the driver? I'm meant to be a gangster though, not part of the emergency services, so I need to get back to being a gangster. I'm still far too white to use the word gangster. Anyway, we are going to turn this garage I won in a street race into a fully functioning business. I really hope that CJ and the crew are aware of the risks as most small businesses fail in the first year. It's stressful stuff, I mean listen to how tense my boy is. But I can't wait to get my hands on that mute and your ass cousin. My cousin? You're gonna diss my familia? It's not uncommon to vent frustrations at those closest to you. Perhaps CJ should try some mindfulness exercises or take a spin class. See mate, not only is this good for your physique, it's far more relaxing than selling dope and curb stomping pimps. While I'm at the gym, I might as well take a lesson in mixed martial arts. I ask this guy if he can teach me, but he says that I'm weak like a wilted weed, aka he body shames me and in 2019 too. Needless to say, I don't take it very well and proceed to beat him to death with a police baton, which cannot be good for my stress levels. Wow, I just killed your sensei right in front of you and you two did absolutely nothing. You both seem like the kind of lads who would spam gifts instead of having a personality. So this guy Zero, who manages an RC shop appropriately called Zero's RC, wants me to buy the building so that he can stay in business. It costs 30k and we only have 26k so we'll need to raise some funds. This game really takes you on a ride, doesn't it? We used to be part of the feared Grove Street families, and now we are investing in motherfucking miniature remote controlled cars and planes. The natural progression for a gangbanger like myself. So raising cash. When I was a kid, I used to just run people over when I needed money, but I now realise this is economically quite inefficient. And picture me, a 13 year old boy, the sun is shining but I'm inside playing Xbox, running over pedestrians and taking their pocket change over and over again. Upon reflection, I actually think it explains why I turned out like I did. We'll need to do some missions and get paid that way. But on my way back to the garage, I stumble across this beast. This van is aesthetically perfect. The red and yellow stripes make it look all artistic so the police shouldn't find it suspicious should I feel the need to abduct a powerless victim. I'm going to look after this van like it was my child. Which probably isn't a great euphemism as I don't think I'd make for a very committed father at this point in my life. Anyway, the garage is pumping away and I for one am happy to be going down a more legit, straight and narrow path. All is well, but then my sister comes in and she's angry. Do I look like a hooker to you? What? Those assholes keep saying shit to me. 
Well, if I'm speaking freely, you do actually kind of look like a hooker. But anyway, no one calls my sister a hooker, even if it's an accurate and precise statement. Our garage is right near a construction site and these workers were the ones catcalling her. Yelling out profanities to women is surprisingly a really effective way of meeting nice girls. My girlfriend and I met because I yelled out the window of my car, Oi Slaza, and she instantly knew I was the one who would eat her babies, I mean, raise her babies. So yeah, we trash this construction site for revenge, but then the foreman hides in this portable toilet. I then jump into a cement mixer and push him into a nearby hole, and then proceed to fill that hole with cement. It seems like this isn't quite the definition of going down the straight and narrow path, suffocating someone in a cement grave and all, Jesus Christ. Caesar, my sister's boyfriend, then calls and asks if I can pick him up and I'm like, sure thing, I'll take my trusty van. When someone asks you to pick them up, you sort of think local pub or shopping centre, not an entirely different island a million miles away. So naturally I start taking shortcuts and surprisingly, the child abductor 5000 is up for the challenge. When I arrive, Caesar says let's take his car, which means I'll permanently lose my van. Shit man, taking my sister's innocence wasn't enough, now you're taking my wheels too? I decide to blow up the van myself, as if I can't enjoy it, no one can. I had some good memories with it that I'll cherish forever. Actually no, I really didn't have the van long enough to warrant one of these sad cinematic montages. So Caesar wants to show me something, so we sneak up onto the roof of a store and pull out my camera. Taking photos of people who are unaware is my forte, though I usually specialise with bathroom pics only. It's some sort of secret meeting with Ryder, one of the ex-Grove Street members who betrayed me, T-Bone, the leader of the San Fierro Riffa, Mike Torino, who somehow looks like both a priest and a stepfather, which is a creepy combination, and Jizzy B, a notorious pimp. It's red hot that they're all meeting together. I'll need to figure out why, but more importantly, I need to get a summer bod. You know what they say, summer bodies are built in winter. I decide to ask Sensei if he'll train me again, but this time I hold a shotgun and as a result, he is far more receptive and teaches me how to do a spinning hook kick. I feel like I'm Hitmonlee now. It's great, thank you Sensei, great session. I really feel the post-workout endorphins kicking in now. It's time to infiltrate this crime syndicate, but I'm going to stop driving everywhere and start cycling so I can lose some of this weight. As a cyclist, I will also start cutting drivers off, developing an arrogant personality, and also chopping my penis off. I've always loved the little details in Grand Theft Auto games, like this theater showing Wizard of Ass. That sounds like a porno though, not going to lie. Yep, it certainly is, I just checked. So I'm going to go and meet Jizzy B at his nightclub, which is the definition of a seedy building. Jizzy's a real stereotypical pimp, and CJ does a smooth job of talking to get on his good side. It's all about you, player. I heard you was the man with the hookup, and you was the man I needed to see. I'm offering my services. Well handled, CJ. So now we are an errand boy for Jizzy B. Good stuff. The errands are all pretty pimp related. Dropping his girls off around town, saving another girl before she dies. I also love the game just has her health bar at the top of the screen and it just says, ho. 2004 was a different time, wasn't it? Running these errands for Jizzy does pay well too, but more importantly, I start to get in with the syndicate. I find myself rescuing Mike Torino from a kidnapping, which really helps build the crew's trust, but I'm not doing a really good job of getting in shape. I guess it's realistic at least, it was a lot easier to gain this weight than to lose it. I have to help Mike and T-Bone escape, and so we take a nearby limousine. Look, I've never had the best sense of direction as I launch the car into a river as I thought it was actually the highway. I'm unable to climb the ladder, and so the boys, 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 and I have to swim incredibly slowly down this mile long river. For two of the most violent thugs in San Fierro, they are remarkably laid back about this whole mix up. With plenty of money now, I decide to go back and purchase the RC shop, as small model aeroplanes are like Viagra to me. The shop is pretty cool, well, perhaps not cool, but it's something. I play a fun little epic prank on the cashier and proceed to whip out my gun and aggressively shout, give me the money or I'll kill you and your family. 
He gets all sooky and like, it was a prank mate, chill. I'm just the new owner, it was just a little workplace banter. Anyway, this is Zero who I saved from unemployment. He's the kind of lad to DM a girl saying he likes her, then immediately send a follow up message saying she's stuck up and never gives nice guys a chance. Then he would send a dick pic and then send a message saying he's so sorry and can they please start over all within a 10 minute period. What I'm saying is that I bet he's seen his fair share of vaginas. He's having some sort of feud with another nice guy and so the next thing I know I am on the roof of the RC store shooting down model planes that are attacking us with a minigun. I've never been so aroused. I help him win his little crisis by flying around in a tiny red baron, literally shooting and killing all of his competitors' delivery drivers, and now the RC shop can start making some cash. Hell yeah, that's gangster. I was really hoping I would have gotten in shape by now, but I'm honestly really struggling. Perhaps I'm just big boned. I guess we're going to have a few San Andreas videos featuring Fat CJ. A quick channel update. Thanks for the support. It's genuinely insane and so humbling how fast the channel is growing. The comments, the likes, the views. I'm very lucky to be in this position and I just love making videos and streaming. So seriously, thank you legends. It's all because of you. I've got a fresh new style of video coming up soon, as well as a Christmas special where you'll meet all of the Stealtho boys in person. Otherwise, thanks for watching you beasts, and a huge shout out to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.